This is what God said to me last week. Being rewarded is not a result of you being perfect or you never making mistakes. It is a result of you being my daughter and you being obedient. God first told me who I was in him. I'm his daughter. Not who I am apart from him, but who I am inside of him. And then he committed my faith. It takes faith to be obedient. Faith that God is real. Faith that God cares what we do, that he hears us. That he cares how we love and how we treat others. God blesses faith. God doesn't look at our lack of mistakes or our perfection to decide how much he'll bless us. He doesn't look at our track record. Jesus paid for that. It's paid for. It's paid for. When he looks at us, he sees Jesus' perfect life. When Jesus died on the cross, he didn't just die for us, but he died as us. He died as us. He paid for our mistakes. He took them on to himself. So I want to read, this is from Romans 4, and it's about faith. It really spoke to me. It's talking about Abraham. Romans 4, it says, The promise given to Abraham and his children that one day they would inherit the world did not come because he followed the rules of the law. It came as a result of his right standing before God. A standing he obtained through faith. If this inheritance is available only to those who keep the law, then faith is as useless. Then faith is a useless commodity and the promise is canceled. So what that means is that we don't have to try to live perfect lives because Jesus has done that for us. But what we do have to have is faith. It goes on to say that this is the reason that faith is the single source of the promise. So that grace would be offered to all Abraham's children, those whose lives are defined by the law, and those who follow the path of faith charted by Abraham, our common father. As it is recorded in the scriptures, and this is God talking to Abraham, I have appointed you the father of many nations. In the presence of God, who creates out of nothing, let me read that again. In the presence of the God who creates out of nothing, who creates out of nothing, and holds the power to bring to life what is dead, Abraham believed and so became our father. Against the odds, Abraham's hope grew into full-fledged faith that he would turn out to be the father of many nations, just as God had promised when he said, that's how many your descendants will be. His faith did not fail. Although he was well aware that his impotent body, after nearly a hundred years, was as good as dead, and that Sarah's womb too was dead. It was dead. And God brought him back to life. That's nothing for God. That's nothing for God. It's so easy to him. It's so hard for us to understand how easy it is for God to do things. But he's all powerful. He's mighty. He's everywhere at once. He knows all things. The past, the present, and the future. This is what really spoke to me. In spite of all of this, Abraham's faith in God's promise did not falter. In fact, his faith grew as he gave glory to God. Because he was supremely confident that God could deliver on his promise. His faith grew in the waiting. His faith grew in the process. Abraham's faith grew as he worshipped God. As he worshipped God before he could see it. Worship can be an act of faith. And God responds to faith. In fact, his faith grew as he gave glory to God because he was supremely confident that God could deliver on his promise. 
This is why, you see, God saw his faith and counted him as righteous. This is how he became right with God. The story of how faith was credited to Abraham was not recorded for him and him alone, but was written for all of us who would one day be credited for having faith in God, the one who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the realm of the dead. He was delivered over to death for our trespasses and raised so that we may be made right with God. Repeat this after me. Thank you, Father, that I am saved by your grace alone. Not by my works or anything I could do, but solely on the blood of Jesus. Thank you for giving me faith to believe in you and in who you say you are. I humbly come and ask that you would strengthen my faith, grow it, and revive it. Turn my faith into a bold and fearless faith. I acknowledge you as the mighty creator of the universe and my all-powerful Father. I declare my trust in you. Give me a heart that is sure of your word and your promises to me. Lead me to ask in faith for the things that are in alignment with your will. And help me to pray with wholehearted faith so that my prayers would move mountains in my life and in the lives of others. Rid me of any doubts that may have settled in my heart and forgive me for ever limiting what you wanted to do in my life. Thank you for a bold faith. In Jesus' name.